Good morning, evening, night, people of planet Earth. My name is Grimgar, and don't worry, you didn't miss a click for those of you who are here for this Sparkly R tutorial. Don't worry, I'm gonna get to it. It's just that I'm gonna use a Minecraft head like the filter you're looking at your right to do the tutorial. If you want to learn how to do a Minecraft head like this one, to which you can apply any skin you want, I have a tutorial for you. The first part of this series will be appearing right now on the top right of the video. Now let's get into the proper tutorial. For this second part of the video, we're gonna start using Spark AR Studio. The link for downloading this program will be down in the description. I'm pretty sure you have to link this to your Facebook account and I'll let you use the program. But that should be no problem. If you download the latest version of a Spark AR, probably you'll be seeing a screen like mine. We're gonna click on this template which says Base Decoration. There's a way to do all what we're gonna do manually, but we can use this template to do it more efficiently and more quickly. This is what we'll find when we open the template, and there's a couple of things I want you to do first. First of all, we're gonna go here to where it says Materials, and I want you to click on this occlusion material, click it and go to the panel on the right and where it says render options blend mode, you're gonna change this, it says alpha to replace. And that's gonna show a bit of a face that's gonna be following this, this model. We can also use our camera if you go here to video and you click camera and here you can see me, hello. This also tracks some of the movements of my mouth. And I'm gonna hit pause here because I want the face to be as straight as I possibly can make it. What we're gonna do here is add our 3D model which we made on the last video or if you have a different model, any 3D model you have. And the type of 3D object I'm gonna be using is an OBJ format. I'm really not sure of all the formats that this program supports but I'm pretty sure you can make an OBJ file out of any tree software you use. So you're gonna add this OBJ to this assets panel, in my case it's gonna be Green's head, and you're gonna take this whole folder and drag it to where it says drag here, pretty straightforward. Now you're gonna see that our material is not transparent, as I explained in the last video of this series, we're gonna fix that here. If you want to navigate around here, you're gonna need again a mouse probably, and it's pretty different to the Blender workspace. To zoom in and zoom out, it's the same thing. To rotate around, you right click and hold. To pan around, you have to use the middle click of your mouse. And that's basically all the navigation you're going to need. What I want you to do with this model is open up here this panel where it says the name of your model. And here we have two cubes, the external one and the internal one. I'm gonna change the names here. Just to make this a bit clearer, I could have done this in Blender, I probably should have done this in Blender, but I forgot to do it. So you're gonna go to the exterior cube, the bigger one, and you're gonna change a couple things. First of all, here on the right where it says materials, I'm gonna just get rid of this. Where it says materials, you're gonna double click where it says material. If you change that name, it'll probably be a bit different, but there's a couple things we're gonna change here. Here on the render options, where it says blend mode, we're gonna change this from replace to alpha. This is going to make the transparent parts transparent. But as you can see, the texture still looks bad. And it's again because of the interpolation mode we're using on this program. And to fix that, we're gonna go to here, this panel where it says texture. Double click on the name of your file. Here you're gonna change two things. Where it says manual compression, you're gonna hit no compression. This is basically going to try to make the image we're using even smaller, but since we're using a 64 by 64 pixel image, there's no need really to compress it. So this warning, don't don't care about it. It's not gonna affect the performance of the filter when you're using it, uh, either on Instagram or on Facebook. Finally, to change the sampling mode, the, the interpolation mode, you're gonna change where it says filtering from low to none. And that's gonna make the texture look how we want it to look. Now, we are gonna fix the size of this thing, because if you see on this panel on the right, we can't even see it because it's pretty big and it's covering where the phone's supposed to be. So what I want you to do is click here on the name of your file. This is going to change both the size of the outer and the inner layer. You're gonna hit T on your keyboard. This is going to allow you to scale, use only the scale property. You're gonna click on this small cube, yellow cube on the middle and 
you're gonna start dragging to the left until it's visible on your screen. This should be around the right size. Now, what I want you to do is start moving this a bit. Use E on your keyboard to get these arrows that will allow you to move the object in 3D space. And I want you to place this at around the center of this thing. We can also delete those glasses. We can hit the delete me thing here and hit delete. And that's gonna get rid of those glasses. We're gonna hit this again and we're gonna start changing the scale using T to be covering this whole head. We're gonna take this a bit to the right and you can even move it a bit if it's necessary. In my case, it's... I think it only looks like this because of the orientation it has. But you want to cover this whole face. And in this part, I don't recommend like trying to keep this as a cube because it's gonna be a massive cube and you probably won't be able to see it pretty well on Instagram. You want to try and get as cubic as possible, maybe making this a bit thicker. And for those of you who don't want to bother about scaling, I found that here on the transformation panels, the numbers 0 0.14, 0 0.15 and 0 0.15 14 again worked pretty well for me. If the device you're using has a webcam, you can hit play here and that will allow you to have this live, the camera live, like I'm using here. And you can sort of see the size of your head, how it's going to deform when you move around. And when you have a result you like, you get ready to export. Now I'm going to explain a couple more things in case you, you're not using it for this Minecraft head, in case you're using it for something like a hat maybe. I'm gonna hit this visible here and we're back to this weird face and we're, I'm gonna explain you what this thing does. I'm now gonna add a different 3D model. This is going to be a bit of a hat and I'm gonna do the same. Drag here and here's the, the hat, it's pretty big again. I'm going to hit T to make this smaller. I'm going to place this where I think it's it needs to be. Kind of here. I'll make this a bit bigger probably. Bigger on this side. Bigger on this plane. Here, I think this looks pretty good. Now, you'll see that this white head is not covering my head like completely. You can see my ears, some of my hair. And if you're doing a filter which doesn't cover all of your head, you're going to need to modify the size of this thing. To modify this head, you're gonna select two things. The part of the back and shift click to select the part on the front as well. And you're gonna start scaling this to the size you think that fits your head. In my case, probably something like this, maybe moving this a little to the left. Something like this might be a bit good. Maybe there, there's some tweaking to do, but I'm not going to upload this filter, so I'm not caring that much about this. I just want to explain what this head can do for you. If we go back to the material on this thing and we change this back to alpha, you're gonna see that if I take my head up, there are parts of the hat that are not being rendered. And that's because the head material I just showed you is in front of the hat and the program is processing it as if something's blocking that part of the hat. It's simulating the presence of our head. Now, if I were to change this head occluder, don't do this, I'm just gonna show you what it's going to do. If I change the layer, it's occupying the head occluder and the face occluder, you're gonna see that I can see the bottom of the hat. And that's not what we want. If you see this, the, like, the effect is lost because if I tilt my head up, the the hat is going to cover my head and we don't want it. That's the reason for that object existing. These two objects are supposed to simulate the presence of your head. So again, if you want to see them, you can go here, click here. In the blend mode, you can select replace so you are able to see this more properly. And you can tweak this around to where you think it's going to fit your face better. And if again, I change this from replace to alpha, you'll see that now it kind of looks more like I'm wearing this hat. And this part of the tutorial is in case you want to make some sort of different filter using a different 3D object, which is going to be on top of your head, behind your head, or something like that. If we go back to the head, I want to show you something pretty cool. Like, this is our head. You can trick it however you want, make the dimensions with whatever you want. But I want to show you what was the purpose of making the head the way we did it. With the textures I showed you how to do in the video in the first part of this series. If I enter either the interior or the exterior layer of the head, 
and go to material we can change the texture to any Minecraft skin we want. We just go here to this texture panel, we hit here new texture and you're gonna find a different skin. For instance, I'm gonna try with PewDiePie's skin. Here you can see the texture is again wrong. To fix that, what we need to do is go to texture, double click on the name of the file, hit no compression, change filtering to none and basically that's it we can make a filter out of any Minecraft skin we want. Now I'm gonna show you how to export your model. There are two ways you can use this filter on your phone. The first one is just having a preview on the app that comes with this program, which is Spark AR. You only look for a Spark AR either on the Google Play Store or the App Store and you should be able to find it. And you have to connect your phone to your computer if you are using an iOS device, you'll need iTunes installed on your computer. And now that I've connected a cell phone here, you'll see that I have this option which says test on device. You can hit send here or you can also send to either your Facebook or your Instagram app and try the, the filter. You're gonna hit send here. And now here on the phone, I will have the option to use the filter here, just for a brief moment. You can record stuff here and then upload it to either Instagram or Facebook. But if you want your filter to be accessible by everyone to have it uploaded to Instagram so that anyone that wants to use it can use your filter, you're gonna go here to upload and export. Here you can see that our file is below the limit. Like there's a, a limit of the size you can use for Instagram or Facebook. You're gonna hit publish as new effect or update an existing effect in case you're doing something different and you can either export the file or directly try to upload this from the app to the internet. I'm gonna change this to Green's head since I already tried with Pewds and here I'm gonna hit now upload here. This is gonna load pretty quickly for this effect at least it's pretty it's pretty light that's why it's uploading pretty fast when you hit upload you're gonna be taken to this website you're gonna give a name to your effect you're gonna select which platform you want to use this in this will already have the the file uploaded that's like the time save you'll get from hitting upload instead of export file you have to select at least one category i think you're gonna select who the owner is in case it can be either your personal account or a page. You can select who's gonna be the publisher on either Instagram or Facebook. You can select keywords you want people to be able to search for and find your filter. You have to upload a demo video which will show how the, the filter works. And you'll also need to create an icon. Basically that's all you need to do. Here you're gonna sort of describe what your filter does. Basically you can say it's um, my Minecraft head. I already tested this process. Here if I go back, you can see I made the PewDiePie head. You can use this filter by going to one of my Instagram accounts, the one I use mostly for my Minecraft character. You can go there, install the filter on your Instagram app and use it. And if you do, please tag me. I want to see your pictures with PewDiePie's head. And as you can see, this took around five hours to review and to be accepted. They said it was going to be around five days, but it's very variable. So you have to be patient. You just have to be patient with the Sparky Air Hub people. And that's basically, it. that's how you upload an Instagram filter. That's all the steps you need to do. The preview icon has to be a square, but it's going to be cropped to a circle, by the way. Any question you may have, you please leave it down in the comments. I'll be answering every single comment I can and if I'm not the one to answer I'm pretty sure someone else will answer to you. That's been everything for this video thank you very much for watching all the way through I really appreciate it and I hope you liked the video and if you did let me know by hitting that like button giving this video a thumbs up really helps me stay motivated and it will also make it so that YouTube thinks that this is a good tutorial so please if you liked it if you understood everything if you enjoyed it, help me giving it a thumbs up. And also, I'd like you to consider subscribing. I'll leave that up to you, though.
I'm not gonna push you to do it. Again, I really hope you enjoyed this different type of tutorial. I think a lot of people might find this useful and if there was any doubt about any part of the process, again, feel free to leave it down in the comments, I'll be sure to answer as many possible questions as I can. For now, that's been everything on my end, take good care, I hope to see you again in a future video, bye! And I'll let you use the program, but that should be no problem. If you download the latest version of the program, if you, if you download the, if you download the latest version of Spark AR, you will be, you will, if you download the latest version of Spark AR,